Myth or truth, you can't make money by selling your short film. Some people do make money. So I don't want to say, and also it's not selling, it's licensing. I always keep on having to remind everybody that you're making money by licensing your short film. Some people do. And, and it's rare, um, but when you hear about it and people make a ton of money off of it, we're like, more power to you, good job. So yeah, it's rare, but it is possible. Myth or truth, you can make a short film with no money. I say it's true. You can totally make a short film with no money. Now, when we say no money, do we really mean no money or do we mean like no money, but actually a couple hundred dollars? <laughs> um, but if you literally say, I'm not going to spend any money whatsoever, then I think it's the iPhone filmmaking that you're using your iPhone. You're doing everything yourself. Uh, you're not using professional actors that you're paying. You're doing it with your friends. And then the post-production, you either have really good friends that will help you out or there isn't much post-production on it. And hopefully you're giving them a good lunch or something afterwards. So there is money involved. Right. Well, that's the thing. It's like, well, even if you say I'm not paying anyone, but I'm buying their lunch, then, you know, five people's lunch, even if you're, you know, being extremely cheap and doing it for $10, which in inflation today you can't do, but let's say even 20, there's a hundred bucks right there for Great. one meal right. for five people, including actors and director. Myth or truth, executives and producers do not watch short films. <laughs> what? No, that's, that is a myth. They do watch short films. They might not watch the film to the entire ending, but they, they do want Hollywood. Uh, the quote I loved that uh, an executive or an agent said that I put in my book um, was that uh, Hollywood is in love with talent, new talent. So they, this is where people become, show their wares is in short films. Uh, so no, they love short films because there's new talent there and new voices and you actually can see it. So, you know, a lot of people uh, have problems getting their script seen. You know, we have no connections. Nobody's willing to see my short, my script. They won't, it let, won't take on solicited material, but they will watch a short film because the short film already exists. So you can't say that, you know, oh, well, we actually had another project that was in development that was similar to it. it. It is there, it exists, and people are more willing to look at it because, you know, it's not as hazy as a, a script that could be changed or we have something else in development with it. So short films can open a lot of doors for you because people are willing to see short films where they're not necessarily willing to look at a script. Myth or truth, a short film won't help you get a feature made. So much not true. People short, there are many examples of feature films that got made that were developed off the short film or that the filmmaker was hired because they made a short film. So, and, and it, it doesn't happen all the time, but every year there's examples of filmmakers who just made a short and then got to make a feature. So no, short films are a fabulous launching pad to make feature films and television. Myth or truth, short films are a waste of time. <laughs> No, number one, short films waste very little time because they're short. <laughs> um, they're not, they're never a waste of time. Uh, as a filmmaker, you learn something every time you do it. As a viewer, you have a chance to maybe see something you've never seen before. So I love short films. I'm the biggest proponent of short films. I never think they're a waste of time. Myth or truth, a short film will never get you a Hollywood job. Not, that's another one that's not true. So many examples of people who've gotten, uh, used the short film to get the job. Just recently, there was an example of Bel Air that he had made a, it was kind of like a trailer short film or whatever, and then they got to make a uh, television series off of it. Um, so there are feature films all the time that were developed off of a short film, so. Myth or truth, every short film gets a million views. <laughs> oh, I wish that were true. <laughs> no, there are very few short films that get a million views. Uh, and those tend to get more than a million, obviously. If you're in that category, it becomes something that a lot of people want to see. And you'd be surprised how many you can have seen. But um, sadly, so many people put their films up and they're, you know, just everyone you know watches it and that's it. Why is the myth of a million viewers unlikely? It's no longer the era of if you put it up, they will come, that someone's just going to stumble upon your film and see it that way. There has to be a reason that they've searched it out and want to see it. So, um, you know, even with a lot of promotion, they're, they're, it's the same problem that everybody has. TV shows have it, big old expensive Hollywood features have it. People only have so much time. And so when they have so much time, what are they gonna actually watch? Uh, I was just saw some, 
I, I think it was one of your pieces where he was complaining that people would rather play a Fortnite than watch a film. So, you know, it's like you're competing with all these different, uh, I myself see it. I will spend all this time going on Instagram, you know, and it's like, that's time I could have watched three short films, but instead I'm flipping through people's stories on Instagram. Um, there's just so many other things that take people's attention. And also, I mean, here I am, I'm a biggest proponent of short films, but I've, I know a lot of people have seen short films that they just thought were terrible or were dull or were long. As soon as people don't have great experiences watching short films, it's really hard to convince them that they want to see a short film. Um, so, you know, uh, very limited attention span, um, where you think like, it's only two minutes, can't you please watch it? Just to get somebody to watch those two minutes is very hard. <laughs> You know, I kind of have a short change short TV, actually. Um, short TV shows films, short films on TV. They have their own channel. Uh, they do license films and try to license films beyond it, too. There are definite ways that people who've invested in short films and want people to see short films and put them out there. And the Academy Award short films that go out on the festivals, on the theater, theatrical circuit where you can see it in your own hometown in the arts theater. Um, so there are lots of ways that short films do get seen and great short films get seen. I think quite often it is that curated thing of somebody saying, when you'd like to see the short film that won Sundance versus, hey, my brother shot something on his iPhone. Which one would you like to see? Now, sometimes that thing on the iPhone is fabulous and the short film that won at Sundance is painful. But, um, you know, in general, the, the, there is that curation thing of, uh, I think a lot of people would rather see the Academy Award nominated short, the Sundance Award winning short, or some viral thing that people have said, this is amazing, you totally have to watch it, and then you watch it. Myth or truth, 99% of short films are awful. <laughs> so, um, I don't think so. I think there's a lot of great short films, but you know, Sundance releases the numbers of films that are submitted to the festival each year. And so last year, in a pandemic year, over 10,000 shorts were programmed. How many did they show? Of course, it's limited by how many they can actually show, but they showed like 59 short films. So, you know, if all 10,000 of those were amazing, wouldn't that be just like, oh my God, how can we not show all 10,000 of them? But no, obviously, the, what's that number? That's close to 99 of them. <laughs> Only, um, you know, 59 of them are going to be. Uh, and again, there, I'm sure there were a lot, like 150 of those other ones that would, should have been programmed, but they just couldn't have been. Sure. But I'm sure of those 10,000, 5,000 of them were just, you know, direct. Myth or truth, these days fan films are better than Hollywood movies? Well, uh, you know, the Hollywood movies, a lot of people like to go see Hollywood movies, so we're not going to discount that whatsoever. And when we say fan films, we're saying that films that are kind of like take some existing property um, and use that in some way to make something of their own. Um, and there is a, a passion, you know, why people would be interested in it is because they're interested in that topic. Um, so like, for example, there used to be a lot of Star Wars fan films that people would make. But... Um, now people's tastes are so all over the place. It's hard to know what a fan film people might be interested in. But actually, I'll go back to the Bel Air example again. That that was a fan film. That he liked the original Fresh Prince, and he thought of a unique way of doing it, and made his own version of the Fresh Prince. Um, that was a different take of it and made a little short film. And then people were interested in that, and as a result of that, they made it into a TV series. If it had not been with that hook, a hook of this is my reimagination of the French Prince of Bel-Air, people wouldn't have been as interested in it. When you say that he did a variation or a different spin on it, what, what was he that? He took it and made it dark as if, you know, you know, because the original concept for Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was he got in trouble back in Philadelphia and had to come out to Bel-Air. So this he made him really get into trouble and it turned it very gritty and uh, made it not a happy-go-lucky sitcom, but a, a dark, you know, current day take on the idea of somebody who got in trouble uh, and had to come out to uh, California.